What is going on, everybody? Welcome in. Feeling refreshed. We had a week off last week, but we're back in with my good buddy. Now, he's actually breaking records right now for the Zach Sports Podcast. First guy to come on for a second time. We got Logan Polite. Logan, we're back, baby. We're back, baby. We're solid, man. We're we're heading in this fantasy, my first year of fantasy baseball. Um, Man, we're feeling good today, boys. That was my nephew's first T-ball game today. We we are level-headed. Yeah, that, that's uh, him in the background, too. Yes, Absolutely. He, MVP is in the background. Uh, oh, he's raking. I can just tell. <laughs> Absolutely. His OPS has to be over 1,000. It to. is 1,000. Four for four today, baby. Oh, four for four. Unit. <laughs> Absolute unit. <laughs> but all right, so on today's podcast, but before we fully get into it, be sure to follow us on social media. You can find me at ZachRigger18. Uh, Zach Sports at Zach Sports HQ putting out some plays today. Plays have been pretty nice. Yesterday they weren't very good. Today they've been pretty good. Logan, give your uh, social media out there. Let the people know where to find you. Man, uh, find me on uh, Instagram at Logan JP One. Uh, follow me on there. Uh, Twitter, I have not been active. I'm gonna start getting back on the Twitter game. I need to start following following that up. Yeah, so I, I tagged my- I tagged you in all the post last time and you didn't retweet or like or anything Dude, i know i gotta get better with that I've, I've been lacking man ever since uh ever since the college scenery dude i'm just I'm like man this social media stuff's for the birds but no i need to get back on that i'm gonna have to start getting on my social media grind i'm for on the sure. tiktoks we send we send each other some uh funny tiktoks back oh, and forth, oh we but. got that for sure and zach sports hq we're growing on tiktok as well actually oh, absolutely because really, i haven't posted a tiktok in a few <laughs> weeks, but you know what we're we're on it I don't like posting the daily plays there because most of the views. No, it's weird. Yeah, most of the plays or like most of the views come after the plays have already been had, and it's like all these guys are just copying. Oh, great play there! Well, yeah, in hindsight, you know. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Like and TikTok I, I can't itself, just post plays. It's so it's so filled with. It's so hard to to reach out to a community because it's just so full of people, man. There's so many people on that app. You never really know how or how like to reach out to a large quantity of people you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah you see tiktok was not one of the things i thought we would be discussing here but here we are here we are we're in the pod the rambles have you've had a few beers i've got a little whiskey in me it's gonna be a good episode. <laughs> we get on some rants baby we get on some rants so today for sure you know i cannot promise actually i think that's one of the things i can promise you is we will have some more rants today but besides Absolutely. the rants uh we got some julio talk gonna talk a little baseball Love julio talk yeah, Julio, best wide receiver in the game. Uh, potentially come to the best team in the league. You know, we'll see. We'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> and then we'll get, that some, get, get some MLB talk, you know, that the no hitters have been crazy. Will there be a perfect game? Uh, some overperformers, some underperformers. Uh, the whole hat substance thing, that's been huge. That should happen today. So unwritten rules of baseball. Yeah, unwritten rules. We we got a lot to talk about, and that's even without the Rams. And we'll try to get it done within an hour. No promises there. We'll see what uh, we can do. So let, let's dive on in. Let's get some Julio talk going. I love me so, some Julio talk, Julio, man. Julio, let's start. This is a betting podcast, and yes, I'll get more to my bets later. Right. Uh, but as of now, let's just start Julio talk with just some odds from FanDuel on where he will play next year because it's not okay. going to be Atlanta. Do you want to do you want to do this of where you I, I want to say let's do where we see him going and where we, he would li- where we would like him to go. Well, my I think I, th- I think I think your answer is the same. I think my my side of the story would be two different answers. Yeah. All right. So let's just go with that. I'll read through these odds, then we'll get to that. Uh, right, so okay. these pl- this uh, plus one seventy five to my Tennessee Titans. Maybe we'll talk about them in a little bit. Uh, plus two fifty for Atlanta. That's a bad bet. Plus 500 to the New England, plus 750 to the Niners, plus 750 to the Washington football team, 850 to the Cardinals. And then we'll end it after this one, plus 950 to the Raiders. Those are the top tier ones. Odds at FanDuel, uh, as I've been foreshadowing this entire time, 
I think he's come to the Tennessee Titans. They're the favorite FanDuel Vegas. They know something. And who am I they to do. argue with Vegas, man? I can't the, do you it. You can't. Especially you can't, as man. a Titans fan, that's I'm not even starting with that. I'm starting That'd be with silly. the Vegas thing. It'd be but, silly. Yeah, so for sure where I want him, Julio, one of my favorite receivers possibly ever. Ever. I think. He's my top, like, hey. he's my guy. I, I, I was all this. aboard the Julio over Antonio Brown debate whenever that was. I just – I'm a Julio guy. He's got the height. The only thing he's lacking is the touchdowns, and that's all on Matt Ryan. So. Exactly. I, Matt, I'm not blaming Matt him Ryan's, on that. Matt Ryan, to me, is is that guy is always going to get you the yardage throughout the season. And let's be honest here. People that try and say that Julio isn't top five, if you look at Julio Jones's numbers when this man is healthy, when he is – it, like if he is and when he is healthy, dude, he, he literally changes the game. He had a 300 he, yard game a couple years ago. He dictates the game. Who has a 300 yard game. I mean, Tyree <laughs> Kill almost had one last last season. Yeah, in two, a half. That was it, a two, yeah, 259. <laughs> and then we come out and just get absolutely blown by the Buccaneers, dude. Doesn't dude get absolutely nothing. Half. <laughs> no, doesn't get a single target. Oh my gosh. But anyway, back to the Julio talk. Absolutely, 100%. Probably the most dominant player at the wide receiver position, at least top three. And if you don't think so, you you just don't have any sort of knowledge of the game. Because yeah. <laughs> I watched – you must uh, – dude, you have to watch uh, Ballers by Brandon Marshall. They talk about every DB that's been on there. They say the most dominant, the most scary person to watch on film in one-on-one is Julio Jones. Has to And be. it's not even close. He's, Height, weight, he, speed – ball skill like red zone target everything he's got everything he's he's literally the full package so yeah but with going back to the titans now you throw him in there with an already great offense you have Tannehill, who i will defend Tannehill till i die he's been awesome for us because he doesn't have to be the main guy you have henry there aj brown this is his year to explode a lot of people have him breaking out a lot of people have him breaking out yeah aj brown has already gone out and said that like Julio Jones is his favorite receiver a couple years ago they played the Falcons in Atlanta and he was wearing a Julio Jones jersey pre-game like a lot of speculation it was awesome he made a TikTok today going back to TikTok (laughs) he literally made a TikTok today trying to recruit Julio Jones I (laughs) loved it so there's a lot of can you imagine that offense Ryan Tannehill Derrick Henry AJ Brown Julio Jones that's why after all this talk with Julio man I, I don't think uh, Titan fans could be too mad about letting Corey Davis go. Oh, not I think at all. that I think he was going to ask for a little bit too much. And, you know, you're catching a like possibly the most dominant receiver in the league at the end of his career, wanting to go to a Super Bowl contending team, which I believe the Titans are. They just have yeah. a few missing. He said holes. it, not me. <laughs> As a Kansas City Chiefs fan, no bandwagon, no bandwagon. I know. Oh, all bandwagon. Oh, this is a biased <laughs> podcast, baby. <laughs> 100% biases over here, baby. But. They, I think the Titans are just a few missing pieces away from actually contending it's on, about the against defense. every team. And it's we can get defense. our defense going. Hopefully, Bud Dupree can do some damage to Norse Jenkins, uh, Caleb Farley, who we got in the first round. And you see, I love that I pick. Thought, dude, I thought they were getting Elijah Moore. I was all on board getting Elijah Moore. And so they didn't do that. So that has to mean it's Julio. Like, all directions are pointed. We gave him our head coach. You know, they just signed Tajay Sharp who was on the Titans forever. So I think Tajay Sharp, Arthur Smith for Julio, I think that's a fair deal in itself, you know? I mean, what can I say? (laughs) How can you not? That sounds like the dream for an organization (laughs) that anybody would be wanting to take. Yeah, we'll we'll give you our offensive coordinator to make head coach. You give us your top five. And we'll give you the most, like, dominant player. Yeah, top ten all-time wide receiver. Here you go. go. (laughs) There. Speaking of that. No, I love it. I, I think he's being very undervalued. Um, I think the reason that he, the undervalue is getting like shoved towards his way is because of the speculation and the uncertainty of where he's going to go. Um, because I think if he stays with Atlanta, man, I don't know. I'm not a big believer in Matt Ryan this season. No, not at all. Uh, uh, the, the Atlanta Falcons are just a big question mark to me. Um, that's why I think Kyle Pitts is getting overvalued a lot. Um, because if it, it put, put Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Kyle Pitts, you're sharing those touches with Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones, I think there's a lot of overvalue. But let's say if uh, Julio Jones has moved on. Kyle Pitts is going to be nice. Kyle Pitts is going to be nice. Arthur Smith is great at calling plays. 
I've and seen that's it. where that's I've another thing why I said Julio is gone. Because oh, Kyle Pitts yeah. isn't just a tight end. They said this dude, he's just the, literally the biggest versatile weapon. You can play him on the line at tight end, move him out to the slot. He can do everything. Yeah. So let, let's get it to yours. I said mine. Mine's the same. I think he's going to the Titans. I want him to go to the Titans. Uh, even though a couple weeks ago I tweeted out, just stop getting your hopes up. It's not going to happen. But right. I, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> every day something All comes the out. Arrows. Every All day the arrows something comes out. And I'm just like, man. So I'm starting to get on board where, you know, he might actually be a Titan. So where are you? Where do you think he's going to go? Where do you want him to go? And why is Tennessee Titans the answer? So <laughs> 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 where, where I want him to go, I want him to go to uh, – I want him to go to the Titans where I have place I could see him landing. That's why I invited him on the podcast, folks. Where I could see him going is is the Chargers. I think I think that Chargers offense is really looking for another weapon because you have you have Keenan Allen who is an elite separator. He gets off he gets off the line, he creates separation, he gets those uh, yards after catch. But they don't, you know, uh, what's uh, Williams, Mike Williams Mike never Williams. turned out to be that get up go get the ball type of receiver. You see, he does it maybe once a game. I was going to say, actually, I think that's exactly what he is, but, but that, that's he's early not at all the he level. is because exactly. no, no, he does it, but then he gets hurt, falling to the ground. Exactly. And then he goes back. So that's exactly what he does. He is the go up and get it guy, but right. that's it. <laughs> that That's all. That's, I think that's all he really has to offer the game. I don't think the Chargers, they're starting to see like, man, he's not really developing. And then somebody like Julio Jones starts to come to the market. And then you have a potential MVP out of Justin Herbert. And you're rebuilding. They rebuilt, they rebuilt the O-line. They add what they needed to. They're going to protect their young QB. So here That's they are. They're like, man, how else can we help this offense? And then you see some one of the best wide receivers in this decade hit the, hit the market. I think they'd be stupid not to target him. No, I do like that. And that actually, they might be my, like, top team that I would want them to go to if he does not go to the Titans. Just right. Because the Chargers defense, people forget, because last year they had a million injuries. Chargers defense is good. Nice. Very good. Very, Very good. Nice. Derwin James, Joey Bosa. Like That's another dude. I wish Derwin James could stay healthy, dude. He could be the He's top. So good. He could be the top safety in the game. He yeah. just cannot stay. And he, all, all. yeah, you can put him everywhere. So their defense is good. Justin Herbert was insane last year. And will Loved only it. grow because they built, they solidified their offensive line. That was the only thing they really had to do. Then I loved throwing Herbert's play Keenan last Allen, year. Man. Keenan Allen and Julio Jones is insane with Mike Williams whenever he's healthy. With right. Austin Eckler coming out of the backfield, Justin right. Herbert can throw it to anyone anywhere on the field. And nine times out of ten, some charger is going to come down. Something's with it. happening. Like, he's made, He's the biggest. He's an improviser, dude. He reminds me a lot of. Like a lot of people doubted him, you know, coming out of college, they had a yeah, lot of, a lot of I, hype I, under one of everyone the, else. One of the funniest tweets I saw, what, and this was like peak Justin Herbert last year when he was just throwing bombs. Someone said Oregon really had this guy throwing screen passes at nine yeah. p.m. Yeah, on Friday nights. <laughs> like yeah, this, this dude, there, his whole college bars. tape was him catching the ball. Throwing those screen there, screen there, because it's Oregon. How dumb can you? Th- it's Oregon. It's like, and this dude just threw the ball seventy yards in his pro day, and now he's who, slinging <laughs> in the NFL. <laughs> who whose last big prospect besides Justin Herbert has Oregon had? Marcus um, Mariota. I, I, I was gonna say as a tight end, I don't really want to talk about. It. I kind of want to talk about, it, but I don't really want to talk about no, it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> you know what? I still like Marcus Mariota. You know what? I'll say. I, I, I still, still like. Do. I respect I have, him. I, I wish him well. Love for that man, I do. <laughs> Watching him at Oregon, man, was it was amazing. I loved Mariota yes. at Oregon. Oh, I loved him at Oregon. And, you know, he was a big part in turning the franchise around because the Titans were awful. Awful. Absolutely awful. Like three win seasons, two win seasons. Absolutely awful. Mariota was a big part of the turnaround, but he just he, – he I don't quite do it. He got us to relevancy, and then Tanhill took over and excelled. I, and that's another thing why people – I don't think a lot of people understand about schemes and, like, player placement inside the NFL. Man, it's huge. It's everything. It's absolutely, it's absolutely everything. You put Tannehill in an offense where he with gets Adam time Gase. to pass with Adam Gase. He gets 
you know, he gets time to pass. He gets, he has a good pocket presence. And then you give him like two good receivers. You get his ass out of Miami. You give him Corey Davis and AJ Brown and all this and John New Smith. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, Tannehill is a pretty decent quarterback. Well, yeah. He always has been. He and, was just and stuck some, in Miami when they were a huge shithole. Yeah. So, something with Tannehill too. He was a wide receiver. Most of college. He was a st- at Texas A&M. He started right. quarterback one year. And so he starts one year. He was a project coming into it. You don't start a project with Adam Gaze. And no. all of a sudden it's like, oh, this guy's a bust. It's like, well, give him some time. You know, he's still mm-hmm. learning how to play quarterback. And exactly. all of a sudden he's got it now where he doesn't have to be the guy. He doesn't have to throw it 50 times no. a game. He and that's why I love him. thirty, and right. just be super efficient, be smart. He's He's got a ton of talent in between the ears. and. Right. And enough mobility, enough arm strength. Like he's gonna be, he's great. I don't, I don't, I think Ryan Tannehill is not one of those quarterbacks where you expect these all crazy roll out of the pocket, sixty yards, seventy yards downfield, accurate passes. Ryan Tannehill is that quarterback. I feel like just does those little things right throughout the game. He manages the game well, and I think he just ended up being a perfect fit for you guys. So, hundred percent. So, Moving on. So the Chargers and the Titans are the top tier guys. I want to check. The- I think so. I want to see. I the think Chargers so. Are on the Chargers, not even on here. I like it off the board. FanDuel. I just complimented you, but now you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you, uh, I, I bet I'm gonna, odds, baby. I was gonna say go take a slight break here. Not really, because we're looking. Got to see how the Knicks are doing. The Knicks won one hundred one ninety two. For no go. day betting, which is Let's fantastic. Go. Dude, do you know what one of the worst things about, like, posting picks is? What's that? So, hear me out. So, Monday, I go 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. I get one. So, pretty good day. Come out positive because one of my wins was plus odds. So, I win, like, uh, like half a unit up. Yesterday, mm-hmm. I'm on the road, as I am for work. And I'm driving, and I'm like, I'm I haven't like posted a video of me explaining my picks in a while, so I'm right. gonna do it. I post a video, give my reasonings, stand by my reasonings for my picks. I go zero and four, zero <laughs> and four yesterday, oh, and then no. today, today I make my picks. No video, I just put the picks out there. I go four and zero today. Like I, I can't do the videos, man. Like <laughs> is that too much reasoning? Too much thought? Like what's going on? It puts that unneeded pressure, man. It, it, it might make you like overthink it. I don't know. Like, like you guys, you, uh, you and the boys have always been into sports betting. I don't. I don't know why. No, I know. I, the went, first second time guess is anti gambling. Exactly. Not, not not necessarily anti gambling. Anti him <laughs> gambling. <laughs> and another 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 thought for the boys is that there is no funnier feeling than watching your buddies lose money. It is the funniest shit you could sit back and watch uh, an experience that me and uh, it, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts you guys. But when you, it hurts when you're like on the watching, when you're like being watched. But when you're watching, like we were at the Nino the other oh, day. Oh, at the Nino and our boy Caleb lost to like 50 bucks. And oh, you just seen the sadness run down his face. You just see it. And he's one of the most expressive guys we know. So when he's pissed, you know it. It's fantastic. Absolutely hilarious. But man. Four no today. We're back on the right track. So I guess I can't do those videos anymore. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a shame. I thought it was a good video. I was jamming out to "Good for You," absolute <laughs> bop of a song. The vibes were the vibes were immaculate. The, the, the vibes it. were there. The reasoning. The Rays were on an eleven game winning streak for five zero against the spread, playing the Royals, who had Brad Keller on the mound, who has a <laughs> six something ERA, booty cheeks, and they lose two to one. It's like such a tragedy. Bro, what? <laughs> such a tragedy. You see, that was yeah. So I'm saying I put my reasoning out there. It was a nice video. We were happy on the road. It was sunny. And then 0 and 4 day today, 4 0. Unbelievable. Oh, I had I had Cardinals, uh Cardinals White Sox. I, I'll do my reasonings now because you know I've already won. Plug it, baby. Yeah. So Cardinals White Sox, first five under. I got my under five. Uh, that the final score was four nothing. It was one nothing after five innings. So that was an easy lock with Rodon and Gann on the mound. That was pretty easy. The Cardinals pretty easy. committed so many errors yesterday. There was no way they were going to do that again. Uh, and then with just injuries, they just don't have the best lineup. Our so outfield was, cannot was, stay healthy. Let's see. 
the Islanders, I got them. It was Islanders, Penguins. Uh, Islanders were home up 3-2 in hockey. I was like, I'm just going to go with the home team. They were both minus 110. So I was like, I'm just going to go with the home team. Feeling good about the Islanders. They were down 3-2 in the second. I was like, shit. And then all of a sudden, one five three. So, you know, it is what it is. No flex. It doesn't matter. Uh, The Tigers, (laughs) who I was watching right before we recorded, Tristan McKenzie on the Indians has been awful. Turns out he pitches great today. It was 0-0 heading into the eighth. Bottom of the eighth. The Tigers get – well, the Tigers have been close, and I'm like, I'm going to fade Tristan McKenzie. And I'm like, you know what? The Tigers hit a uh, a sack fly in the bottom of the eighth, and they won the game one nothing. I was watching it right before this, and then I had Knicks minus two because there there was no way they were going down 0-2 both at home, and then they just won by more than two. <clears> so four zero. I can say my picks now. Woo! We're back. Solid. But we're there, back. I've been dead even this entire week. I went two two and one on Monday. I went. Oh, and four yesterday. I went four and no today. Let's I'm go. Dead even, dude. <laughs> dead even. We're gonna take them victories, though. We have to take the victories. Oh, and oh we're celebrating, them. baby. This is happy whiskey, not sad whiskey. <laughs> but so, all right. On to the Detroit Lions. I, I just want to ask you, who is the biggest between these two teams? Who do you have as the biggest dumpster fire in the MLB right now? The Detroit Tigers or the Seattle Mariners? Oh, Tigers. You think so? Mariners have shown life. Mariners have shown life. They've been good. They they went on a streak a couple months ago. Like they were towards top of the division. And they have right. these guys coming up. The Tigers are just Tigers are brutal. The biggest oh. question mark. I couldn't probably name you but five people on their entire team. It the Tigers are in a weird spot right now. Yeah. And, and their division's not even that good. They were supposed to be good this year. Exactly. The twins. What has happened with the twins, man? A big question mark <laughs> across the whole MLB for me. Yeah. N- Nelson there's, there's Cruz a... is still raking, though. <laughs> I don't understand how this man's about to turn to dust by this point. This man's been hitting home runs since I was like 12 years old. He's I don't so know nice. where. He's so good. He's still I, so I'm one to know him. Well. MLB The Show 21 home run derbies, Nelson Cruz. He's got 101 man... power. <laughs> I played with this man on MLB 2K9 on the Xbox 360, and he's still playing today. Still raking. rakes. <laughs> still raking. I don't understand it. Yeah. But, okay, before before we transition, I'm going to go back into a little bit of football talk. I want okay. to get your opinion on a few more things before we transition to the whole MLB thing. Let's get it. Um, one big question I'm asking everybody because I know how I stay on this. You have Boomer Bust on Sam Donald this year. Sam Donald. This Sam Dar- I love Sam Darnold this year. Absolutely love I, him. I love Sam Darnold this year. I don't know why this man Damn is it. So I, I thought we, I thought we were poised for a debate. Damn it. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm 100% agreement with you right now. I love Sam Darnold this year. Um, the man is 22 years old, if anybody doesn't know that, by the way. He's 22. This dude, he's like 22, 23. This man There's is no... still so young. Look it up. I promise oh, no, you. This I man... know he's young. I know he's young. Let's see. We'll, we'll fact check me real Sam quick. Sam Darnold, I, I'm intrigued. Let's see what Google's got to say. 23. 23, 23 years, years old. old. So you put this man, let's think about it. By 21 years old, you know, most of us young men okay, have no okay. idea Okay, he's the still hell. older than me. That's good. I was going to say, <laughs> look at my life right now. <laughs> but look, by the, like, so, like the realistic side of things, Sam Darnold was put at 21 years old into a New York Jets offense that was an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah, we were talking about dumpster have, fires in the MLB, NFL. It's the Jets. New York Jets is literally Jets. just dookie, the worst, stinkiest, poopy of all time. They're bad. They were bad in every, every sense of the term. And then Sam Darnold's getting all this hate. I'm like, you guys couldn't name or have no one on your entire offense. Your offensive line is probably like worse than the league. Defense not helping whatsoever. Adam and your wide receivers plays. Adam, yeah, like that, Adam that's the whole thing. Actually, like you give this twenty-year-old guy Adam. Like, here you go. The offensive go. offensive guru Adam Gase. Like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah but, no, I agree. I love him. Uh, to Carolina and I love the move for Carolina as well. Dude. Like 
because they have wow, big boys crack there. They big got boy. we got DJ Moore, got Robbie Anderson, Chris McCaffrey in the backfield, a defense that's surprisingly good. Working and his way up. Matt a Rule. lot of young a lot of young guys. Yeah, I was very wrong about Matt Rule. Well, I shouldn't say very wrong. Like he was just one of the hires that I was like, I, I don't know much about this guy. Like I didn't either. I, I was like, I had that, that's no kind idea of who he was. I know it was the coach at Baylor. Like that was about it. I was like, that okay, was interesting. I didn't think much of it. And all of a sudden, they're winning games they shouldn't win. They lost by two points to the Chiefs. Like they're I'm like, they're competitive in games. I, and now all of a sudden, I they love them this, this coming who season. Has some arm talent who can sling it a little bit with some weapons. Like I mean, I, I like dude, DJ Moore. DJ Moore is an absolutely phenomenal talent at the wide receiver position. Yeah. Oh, Robbie DJ Anderson. Moore, I'm all about him this year in fantasy. Love DJ. Robbie Moore. Robbie Anderson last year with Teddy Bridgewater as quarterback. He didn't score a lot of touchdowns, but this man, I picked him up, man. I think it was in the I'd say the seventh or eighth round. And this man was going off. This man had I didn't he have over a thousand yards receiving last year. I think so. Yeah. I mean, just racking up the yards with Teddy Bridgewater. I just think the ceiling and the floor for the Carolina receivers this year are absolutely ridiculous. I think Sam Darnold's going to come out and just prove a lot of people wrong. And this division, I've said it before, it's a very talented division, but this is this might be the year to really like surprise and do some damage. Yes, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who they're returning everyone. They're going to be a huge threat because they will. They're returning everyone. The Falcons, we've already talked about them some. They're okay. they, they don't know what they want to do. They should just they have no they, idea. They should just shut it all down and rebuild. But they're like, no, no, we're gonna keep our 36 year old quarterback, but we're gonna trade Julio Jones. Like Matt like, Ryan, like, I've never been decision. a believer in him. Oh, I've never right. have. I, I don't mind the Kyle Pitts pick, but that's a pick that's like, okay, that's a win now pick. Because you're like, yes. oh, we have Matt Ryan. When you're not going to have – realistically, you're probably not going to have the number four overall pick next year. You're going to have no. a, a worse pick. So, it's like you got to get a quarterback. And so, they don't know what they're going to do. The Saints are going through a huge change right now. Whether – like I'm Drew sorry, Bruce Saints retired. fans. What yeah, you they're guys going through do? a huge change. So, it's like the Panthers could low-key make a run at this division. I'm telling which is you. crazy to say, but they really could. I'm telling like, you, man, they, they have healthy, a they lot. They could. Matt Rule head into year two, like that. They have a lot of young talent on their defense. They just dra- uh, drafted J.C. Horn, absolutely fantastic talent. Uh, Jeremy Chen had a breakout season. Derek yeah. Brown, stud. Um, I can't say his name. The D.N. out of Penn State last year, super hard name to say. <laughs> Can never remember how to say it. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal defense. They have weapons on offense. I think the Panthers are going to surprise people. Yeah, I agree, a hundred percent. So we said some dumpster fires, both in the MLB and NFL. I want to kind of transition now into some MLB talk. Let's do it. Man, I want to talk about a dumpster fire that is a low-key and high-key dumpster fire at the same time, and that is the Los Angeles Angels. The Angels, (laughs) dude, they have the two – to baby the top two guys in the MLB – Debatably, with Mike Trout, Shoei Otani, at least t- two top five guys. Debatably top two. And they're like last place in the division. Or like <laughs> a game ahead of last place. It makes zero sense. You have they Mike Trout, bad. Shohei Otani. And Shohei Otani is, or at least was at some point. Let's see if he's on my list here. I don't know exactly where he's at. Shohei Otani has, let's see how many home runs he's got. 15? 15 home runs. So that's tied for second and behind third. Vladdy, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Tied for set. Oh no. Tied for third. I think. Cause uh, yeah. Tied for third. Cause one guy got 17 who was a former Cardinal, not gonna whatever trade, him away, for, tra- trade him away for cash considerations. A Dallas Garcia. Oh yeah. Because just the cheapest this fucking guy. organization in baseball, St. Louis Cardinals. And like, cheapest. I, you know, Mo gave me Nolan Arenado, so I ha- I can't be quite as mad. But man, or actually, no, Adalis Garcia is still at sixteen, so him and Vladdy are tied for first, and then Shoyo Tani's like, so he's hitting that. He has like a two something ERA as well. 
So you right. have Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, and you're still terrible. Terrible. That means I, that it's a dumpster fire of an organization, not just a team. They fired their pitching coach today. I'm pretty sure is a notification I got on my phone on the way to the gym is that they fired their uh, pitching coach. Okay, which you, they you, should you go to the gym. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Steve did. I just said a slight yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah, so, slight flex. <laughs> all right, gotcha. Anyway, no, I'm trying, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um. A point I'd like to make is I don't think Shohei Otani needs to be a pitcher, man. I think this dude's bat is so unbelievable and has so much talent. If you put this man to work and just only focused on hitting, what could this man be capable of? This man could probably have like probably have 20 home runs this season already. So, so if you'd he have, only focused on hitting. So you'd have Mike Trout hitting four something. You'd have Shohei Otani hitting four to five hundred something. And you'd still be under 500 in wins. <laughs> they, they, they're, they are a, a description of a team I'd like to stay oddly bad with the, as much talent as they have. They're like the, they're like the Dallas Cowboys. They are just oddly bad all the time. Yeah. So much talent on their team, it's everywhere, but they just, they just somehow lose. And it's just the worst because they're West Coast, so they play at like nine, ten o'clock every night. Right. So. People can't stay up for that. I got to be up at six, man. Like, I have a tough time. No one wants to watch that. I, I, I not, do. not at that yeah. point. And Especially I, when they're not winning. Like, no. It's, and they're not. As of recently, they're just not. They just don't win games. They don't They don't really put uh, – they just struggle without Trout in the lineup, man. And he's just struggling to stay healthy these past couple of years. He's just yeah. had these, like, little minute injuries, man. I think it's the calf now. But yeah, – it, It's hard. I see what you're saying, and I get that, but – it's hard. He yep. has to do something ERA. I'm just talking, my buddy. <laughs> What's going on? He got a guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, man, it, yeah, and it's it's just tough. He he's got a two something ERA. You can't not have that on the mound when you're the Angels. You know, no, he's but like maybe maybe later in his career they'll transition him to maybe a you know kind of a closer bullpen guy, so he can just kind of come in. And man, we're everyone's flexing today. Logan, we're, goes we're to big, the gym. we're big gym bros. We're big gym bros yeah, over here. Big gym bros. I, I've <laughs> worked out before too, you know. <laughs> I've attacked the weights. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. So steez. <laughs> one, one, one sec, one sec, Reg. I love it. <laughs> oh man, it's a great episode. Oh, th- this will be a perfect time if uh we had a sponsor, but we're Unfortunately, not big enough to have sponsors yet. So it, it is what it is. But Logan is back. What's going okay, on? Okay, sorry. Had to, had to, he had to ask me a question. Okay, we're back. We're yeah. back. No, all good. I'm surprised my grandma in all these episodes, my grandma's not come up during a, season, a single episode yet, which is kind of surprising. We've had two guest appearances on this side of the podcast today. Yeah, I was going to say, just... who, who would have thought it would have been my side? Because my grandma <laughs> comes in my room every couple hours. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's my brother and my nephew. So, yeah, no, that that's funny. I love it. Um, always good to spread the bread. I said uh, while you like had your headphones off, I was like, this would be a great time for a nice sponsor read, but I'm not big enough to have any sponsors yet. <laughs> Damn so. it. So Next I was like, game. one day. I was like, one day. <laughs> one day. I looked it up. It was like, too. I looked it up because I was like, you know, I'm still like starting this thing. I'm like, you know, like. Let's see. I was like, maybe after a month or two, like I'll be enough to at least like maybe some smaller sponsors try it out. And people right. were saying it's like you need thousands and thousands of views. I'm like, I get like 30 listens an episode. Like, okay, yeah, that's pretty okay. solid. That's it's not, it's a solid. start. But I was oh, like, yeah, no, no one's gonna give me money yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. Yeah. But we're right. working, baby. We're working yeah, for sure. But yeah, so let's just get into some MLB talk and. Some of the guys that I want to talk about, I'm trying to think of some nice like Vladdy, absolute stud. They're my blue. The Blue Jays are my bandwagon team this year. Hundred uh, percent. I I have to bandwagon, dude. Bo Bichette and Vladdy, that duo right there is just absolutely. Nuts. I, I had my love I had those my guys Jays pull over last game or last uh, episode on. It was fantastic. Loved repping Vladdy, it, dude. This dude is absolutely. I mean, deleting baseballs. Yeah, they're and gone. And it's at a yeah, crazy a racism. Rate. It is just absolutely 
crazy. This dude came into the season. Everybody's like question mark. Everybody knew there was probably a point for Vladdy Jr. Like we're waiting for the breakout. We just don't know when it's going to be. And obviously everyone knows who his dad was. The dude mashed baseball. So we're like, okay, we just got to, we got to sit back and wait. And now you see the dude dropped a little bit of weight, got in shape. Yeah. He lost 40 pounds for the season and he's still raking. Cause there were people like, Oh, so you still go have the power. He's still um, a big new, new ass flash. dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Newsflash. He's leading the league of home runs. He's absolutely just crushing it right now. Love the blue Jays. Love where they're at. Yeah. Then I, I have a future on them as well to win the, uh, AL East, but that's going to be tough with the Yankees, be tough. the Red Sox, the Rays, and the Blue Jays. They're all they need some bullpen. Right it's, they yeah. need some bullpen help. Well, they, they have Hinjin Ryu, who's been awesome. Rick Thornton has actually like surprised me. He's been pitching. Robbie pretty. Ray, baby. Robbie Ray's been a good pick <laughs> for them. A little lefty in there. And what's the so, yeah. what's the prospect they just called up? What was his name? Alex Ooh, something. Yeah. How, how do you do today, Manoa? Manoa got pushed back. Him and the Yankees got pushed back today. Really? So I they mean, didn't play today. They did not play today, which was very unfortunate. I was really looking forward to that game. Yeah, apparently I, I this kid to see that throws as well. absolute gas. Wow. Is from him. apparently this kid is just absolutely ginormous. He's throwing smoke up on the mound, and I was really looking forward to it. I picked him up in fantasy for this week. My yeah, uh, my I tried in my dynasty league, and he was already picked up. But yeah, just look at this: the Blue Jays are above five hundred, and they're fourth place in their division right now. That's Five nuts. games behind the Rays. They're hot. Then you have the Rays down there, dude. It, it's going to be tough. My future the, is going to be tough. But man, the Rays are the spot. Like for another thing, just for a quick side note, the Rays, they are the spottiest hitting lineup I've ever seen in my entire life. They well, struggle, they struggle, they struggle, and then they smash for like two games, three games. Struggle, well, they struggle. They just have struggle, a struggle. million guys. The last three years, the Rays have had like. I don't even know. I don't know if they up the roster sizes for just the Rays, but they have like 15 <laughs> they have so guys. Many. <laughs> they have like 15 guys, like 15 infielders that they play. They're the 15 infielders, I feel like. And they then just they just bounce around. Kinda, they just cycle them out. It's like, okay, yeah, you get a few reps here. You get a couple games. All right, now you get a couple games. But like, they're all good. Like, they're all hitting above 250. But it's oh, like, yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been that all, way for like three years now. Exactly. I, they're weird, man. I, the Rays are – I do love the Rays. Like that, I like them a lot too. It's hard because I like the Rays and I like the Blue Jays. Blue Jays is my bandwagon squad for 2021. But, you know, I, I don't hate the Rays. And seeing Randy Rosarina hit leadoff, it, he's – I can't even talk about it. He's so good and he's so swaggy. Like he just comes up to start the game and just – all decked out and just his like exit velocity has to be insane because <laughs> every single time he makes contact with the ball because i i've bet against the rays a couple times every single time he makes contact i'm like shit it's it's it, he's absolutely deleting baseballs a rose yeah. arena from his postseason uh last year i mean the dude is just absolutely raking along with a lot of the rays man i mean joey wendell he mashes baseballs. Awesome. Austin Meadows, when he doesn't strike out, mashes yeah. <laughs> baseballs. His strikeout rate, I mean, that's why I was so scared to draft him this year, is yeah. the dude, he mashes, strikes out. And the strikeout rate for me was just a big turnoff. I think he's down in like the subpar 200s right now for his average. Yeah. which was. And the only <laughs> guy that's struggling is Braden Lowe, who I was huge on heading into this fantasy season. Because <laughs> he was supposed to be on the race, plays every day, hits – Hits the three hole normally, but man, he's been he's lucky to hit two hundred as his average. He's struggling the other but... day. Streamed a hitter, streamed Brandon Lau, and it's the day he put up eighteen points. Yeah, no, he's I got said, that potential in him. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh my! And he stream. I was like, he has that unbelievable luck of streaming a hitter for one day and then dropped him the next. And he puts up 18 points. And I was like, dude, Lau is – he was too inconsistent for me. Anyway. Yeah. I, I, um, I want to take the chance on him. Uh, there, there's a couple more things I want to talk about before we round – or before we end the episode. Uh, I guess we can just kind of talk about briefly. Literally today, we're recording this Wednesday night. Today, the Cardinals – it's been a talk 
for the last couple of years with like pitchers and certain substances. So we all see on the hat. If you're on YouTube, check this out. You always see a little circle of something. You see that all the time. That's not rare. I've seen that. I've watched baseball. I'm 23 years old. My I've entire watched life. For 23 years. And you always see that little circle. The ump comes because I guess he hasn't had enough attention on him, not enough spotlight, comes and talks to Gallegos and says he has to switch his hat because he has that circle and he's you know, doing the little thing, you know, got a little pine tar, a little something. MLB just needs to admit that pitchers, they can use a little have something. been doing this since the game has been introduced. Yeah. Like, just come, come out with, like, something like, this is legal. This is not legal. It's- like, admit that something can be legal because you see that on – I see that every game that I watch. Dude, I mean, these, like- guys, these dudes are out here throwing – Hundred mile an hour, or ninety to hundred mile an hour pitches between fifty and hundred a game, dude. You get sweaty, you start losing grip on your fingers. It's most likely hot outside. It's, it's just baseball weather. Too. It's a hitter's league, man. I mean, come on now. Yeah, it, how it's, are it's you? Stupid, especially all these because most time it's like relievers. So it's like you got to see like how are they supposed to make a living in the league when everyone's everyone could be raking going crazy. You saw the juice ball last year, how many home runs were given up. Like, they they need something. So just I don't like it. I, I no, think it's not stupid. It, it was so I hate dumb. when people people were like, like oh, okay. it, it helps the pitcher. I'm like, man, a pitcher. Good. <laughs> thank you. That's what I'm saying. It, it should. Like, in a sense, I, I don't think they should. Yeah. Have, it's not like a crazy. I don't think it's such an advantage where it's breaking the game, especially when it's been known to have been used. Since the beginning of it, like people since the beginning yeah, th- this of the nowhere, game have been yeah. using it. This is it's not near, new. Yeah, this is nowhere near the steroid era where it's like, okay, these guys are hitting 100 home runs a year. Perfect. Nothing analogy. like that. And Perfect. then, yeah, like I think if the MLB just comes out with, okay, this substance is legal, this right. is not, like come out and say something like admit it's part of it, but they're not going to do that. They're going to be like, this- oh no, we're just going to ban this guy for doing it or make him change a hat. And then the next game, we'll see another guy. Oh, no, he's fine. Like it, Yeah, he's fine. Th- there's no consistency there. So, little rant there. Yes, it happened to my Cardinals. Once again, Homer podcast, bias podcast, whatever. But I've thought this way for a long time, so that's fine. Um, also, we can't end this podcast without talking a little bit about the no-hitters. It's going with the pitching, dude, there's been so many. It's, it's unbelievable. I, I don't know what to think about it because it's no one that I've expected yet. It never is. It's never it is. the main guys. It's always like three, four guys in the rotation. It's not your. You it's not night. your Garrett Coles. It's not your Trevor Bowers. It's never not your is. Shane Bieber's. It's what's his name, Spencer Tur- Turnbull. Spencer Turnbull. And although you got he is Wade, the Tigers ace, he's pretty good. Um, Wade Miley. Yeah, and that's a. I'm great. like, dude, what is happening? Wade Miley literally came out and said, "He goes, if you watch, if anybody watches Trevor Bowers YouTube video, shout out you." because he puts out really good content. You need to check him out. And he literally talks to him. He goes, I have no idea how I did that. Because in the first three innings, if you, anybody watched that game, there was three infield errors that actually got made up and plays were made. But the luck that in that game that happened, the, it, just, it just sums up the no-hitters of this year. It, it yeah. really does. It, you see what's happening around the league. Yeah, it, it's just a shame because, like, I – and like I've heard this a bunch, so I hate having a similar take as other people. But like, I I feel it a hundred percent because like I remember like middle school, like I would hear no hitter, I would drop everything, I'd go, I'd watch like, the last like three innings. Now I get a little notification on my phone. I'm like, oh, no I, I, I I was like, I'll I'll see on Twitter if it actually, <laughs> you know, like I I have like zero emotion. I'm like, I think I tweet something out with like the uh, school photo meme, like the white kid that's just. Yep. I, I was like me watching another no hitter. It's just Yep. It's, I mean it's like it's it's cool because like it's super impressive still, but it's like there's not as much excitement. Like we need a perfect game or something. But I mean it's just like with anything else, man, when it starts happening so often, how excited can you really be? Yeah. Like it's unless when it, it's when like it your starts to become a common like, occurrence. Yeah, when it I mean, unless it's your team, then it's kind of cool. But for yeah. everybody else, it's just like, man, Wade Miley's out here throwing no hitters. What? Yeah. 
No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Musgrove, I could see it. Carlos Rodon having an absolute breakout year. Cool. Those type of guys, it, when that stuff yeah. happens, you're like, that's how? The, I always remember, like, it's never, like, your top tier ace. Like, it's always – it's always guys you never expect, and they just have those guys third, fourth, have a day. fifth, and rotation. And I, I love, yeah, and I love betting on the teams that are playing the guy who just threw a no hitter. So I love, like, the game after the no hitter, they never, never play well. I bet the Indians after Spencer Turnbulls, they won. They had like he gave up like three earned runs. Like Wade Miley did start. the same. It, it's Wade like Miley they always absolutely. Do- did garbage yeah make the fancy points on that one so it's like i just love betting the team against it's not a hundred percent you know carlos for no. has has uh hurt me a little bit but Oof. like you know like more times than not it's gonna hit though it's just kind john of john me what about john means business john means oh i i'm a big john means day i always Ooh, bet the love that man the, the only time i've lost was i bet orioles the entire game and they ended up losing like in the like seventh, eighth, ninth inning. So I just bet Orioles first fives money. And although that was my first push or my only push on Monday because they were tied after five, but whatever it is, what it is. But yeah, we so, love John uh, Means. We support him. Uh, I, he needs to get out of that poopy organization. He will, as in Baltimore. <laughs> um, <will>. There's <laughs> word, dude. There's word. Every podcast I listen to. Dude, the Yankees, the Yankees are pursuing John Means, and I just I do not that. want that. I just do I, not want that. To I don't happen. want that either. I I see it because the Yankees do need more pitching, but, but we also know. But I love John Means. Because, I don't want to root for the Yankees. Like, <laughs> we also know organization that needs help in the bullpen area, as in uh, the St. Louis area. So yeah. STL, go for John Means business. He will do well for the organization. Oh, that'd be and, so nice having flair, dude. Sandy Alcantara. We gave him away in the Marcelo Zuna deal. Every five days, every five days, he's. It's just I'm sad. I'm like we, we don't have give him in Flaherty. Like we don't give prospects. Long, look, Adolis Garcia. Look what he's doing. Yeah, and and then you have. I mean, there's just so many. I mean, I love where the team's at right now, but we can't stay healthy. I'm not going to dwell on it because we, we, we have can go no on forever. Depth, but yeah, we, I was going to say we're already at about our hour. I think we're about 50 minutes now. So man, it's but still uh still top of the division. Got a big win today, did not get swept by the White Sox. Uh jo- shout out John Gant for that one. But Logan, thanks for coming on again, man. It's been a good one. Got got a lot of good good talks in there, good topics. It's good Absolutely. to be back. It's always a pleasure to be on the Zach's podcast, baby. Yeah, let's get well everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Uh hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe, follow on social media, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week. Let's get it.